One of the most charming aspects of Kingdom Hearts has always been its flair for fan service, proving the ultimate crossover between Final Fantasy and Disney's many properties and characters. Open your hearts to some of our favorite Easter eggs and references in Kingdom Hearts 3. To start, there are nearly 100 Mickey Mouse shaped silhouettes hidden throughout the game's many worlds. Lots of these lucky emblems are found etched in walls and floors, but a few get creative with the environment, formed in swirls of clouds in Olympus, bushes on the horizon of the 100 acre wood, or a mosaic of yellow doors in Monstropolis. Snapping a quick pick of them rewards players with powerful items, equipment, and rare synth materials, not to mention the most coveted of video game easter eggs, a secret ending. But hey, we are not here to talk about the ending. Instead, let's highlight some specific references in some of the levels. In the early stages of Olympus, there's a statue of Achilles that players must topple to progress. When Sora strikes the statue's heel, the whole thing starts to crumble. In Greek mythology, Achilles was an immortal demigod whose only vulnerability was at the heel of his foot. Atop a building in Thebes is a tiny mural of the five muses, goddesses of the arts and proclaimers of heroes. Heroes like Disney's Hercules. We remember them as the lovely ladies who sang the tales of ancient Greece, gospel choir style. While running around Olympus, you may have noticed many hercs around the bushes and trees. They're the merch made in honor of Hercules' heroics in the movie. He's an action figure. There's even a side quest in Agora where Sora seeks out a bunch of golden figures for a young boy's incomplete collection. Catching him nets you the hero's belt a nifty accessory that provides significant defense buffs and elemental resistances. You'll find all kinds of fun references dotted around the worlds too. There's a number of wanted posters in the Kingdom of Corona, each one with Flynn's face. At least, I think it's supposed to be Flynn. They just can't get the nose right. In Monstropolis, there's a flyer near Roz's desk outlining the 10 surefire ways to get fired. Numbers 1 and 10 both say, forget to file your paperwork. A callback to the warning Roz gives Mike in the movie. At least Mike knew when to walk away and not argue. He must have seen the Flyers' third way to get fired, talking back to Roz. You've got a friend in me. There's a couple of loose references in Pirates of the Caribbean, but they've been pretty censored for that squeaky clean E10 plus rating. So we're just gonna move on to the mother load of Easter eggs, Toy Box. This world in particular is brimming with them, from running gags and hidden messages to nods towards the production team themselves. The Luxo Ball, a prop in the Pixar's first short film from 1986, can be seen on the floor in Andy's room. Jump on top and Sora can even take it for a spin. The lamp on Andy's desk also bears a striking resemblance to Pixar's luminous mask Scott, Luxo. Andy's bookshelf is chock full of books with goodies scribbled on their spines. Most are in direct reference to the late 80s Pixar's animated shorts, like Tin Toy, Red's Dream, The Adventure of Andre and Wally B, and Knick Knack. Tin Toy, in particular, put Pixar on Disney's radar, which ultimately led to the production of Toy Story. Two of the books, however, have more direct ties to Disney's history. Grimm's Fairy Tales has inspired Disney to adapt its story's darker tone into more humorous retellings suited for children, like Snow White and Tangled. Babes in Toyland, on the other hand, was a Christmas musical produced by Walt Disney in 1961 that featured many fairy tale characters from Grimm's collection. On the first floor of Galaxy Toys, behind the checkout counter, there's a bulletin board with a doodle of Mike and Sully. Well, parts of Mike at least. It's a fun callback to the running gag in the Monsters, Inc. movies, where Mike is either obscured by objects or out of frame in promotional materials. An employee of the month board in the lobby of Monstropolis keeps the tradition alive. The Pizza Planet delivery truck can be spotted in the parking lot just outside Galaxy Toys. There are also a bunch of photos of the truck tucked away throughout the kingdoms, on a cupboard inside Remy's Bistro, and tacked on one of the office cubicles in Monstropolis's scare floor. There are a couple other sticky notes worth mentioning, too. The lost and found board outside the Kid Corral has a sketch of a missing fish that looks an awful lot like Nemo. Also, the first floor checkout has a sketch of Luxio Jr. with a friendly message about energy efficiency. Remember when Andy's mom made him sell all his toys at the beginning of Toy Story 2? The yard sale sign from that traumatic day can be seen lying on the ground in an alley behind the house. I'll never forgive you for making me sell my Thundercats, mom. Want to become a space ranger, just like Buzz Lightyear? First, you'll have to learn the secret deep space code found printed on a poster in Andy's room. Funny enough, it's actually Morse code, so shouldn't be too hard to master. The train from one of Andy's playtime fantasies at the start of Toy Story 3 can be seen on the floor by Andy's toy chest. The number 95 emblazoned on the front is thought to be a reference to either the year 1995, when the original Toy Story movie was released, or Lightning McQueen's number from Cars. There's an old Rock'em Sock'em robot set on the second level of Galaxy Toys, a shout out to the Mark's Toy Company game from the early 1960s. It's fully interactive too, and winning around fittingly gives 
gives you a chest with a strength boost. Many a Pixar buff will recognize this last gem of an Easter egg. The sequence A113 has become an inside joke amongst alumni of the California Institute of the Arts. Many of the folks that ended up working for Disney and Pixar used a classroom with the same number. This friendly nod to humble beginnings has appeared in every single Pixar film released to date. Unsurprisingly then, A113 can be found hiding in multiple locations throughout Toy Box, Monstropolis, and Remy's Bistro. So far, we've found it scribbled on the license plate of Andy's mom's car, like in the movie, a street sign inside the play place, a shutter door in Monstropolis's factory, and a food can in Chef Remy's Bistro. The happiest place on earth. But the Disney love doesn't stop there. Between all the flashy Keyblade transformations, team attacks, and magic spells, Kingdom Hearts 3 offers plenty of exciting new ways for Sora and friends to send Heartless to the heavens. But one towers above the rest, with terror, even. Sora skips the lines and throws away his tickets with his new six-pack of special attacks inspired by real Disney theme park rides. Mad Teacups draws from the classic Mad Tea Party ride found in Disneyland parks all around the world. As the name suggests, the spinning monstrosity is modeled after the unbirthday party scene in Alice in Wonderland. And to this day, it remains the leading cause of motion sickness in children five and up. Big Magic Mountain, surprise, surprise, snags its inspiration from Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, a roller coaster in Frontierland at several Disney parks. The ride itself sees passengers dashing in and out of desert caverns and haunted mines. Blaster Blaze is in clear reference to Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, otherwise known as Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, down in Disney World in Florida. On the ride, you play play as newbie star command recruits on a spacefaring adventure via track-guided vehicles armed with laser pistols. Magic Carousel is based off one of the oldest attractions in Disney park history, the King Arthur Carousel. Splash Run was inspired by a combination of Cali River Rapids and Grizzly River Run. Both are River Rapids rides, though the former comes packing a poignant PSA about illegal logging and habitat destruction. You'd think the pirate ship would be from Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's not. Instead of riding the Black Pearl, it's just a generic ship that swings back and forth like a pendulum. Hail to the King. The collection of classic Kingdom minigames takes inspiration from both old Disney animated shorts and 1980s era LCD games like Game & Watch or Tiger Electronics handhelds. Classic Mickey Mouse shorts that make an appearance include Giant Land, The Mad Doctor, Musical Farmer, Building a Building, and The Barnyard Battle, just to name a few. Completing them all unlocks the classic tone Keyblade, which has a cool throwback to the timeless river world from Kingdom Hearts 2 and its shot lock. Furthermore, promotional material for Mickey's classic capers are littered throughout Twilight Town. Most notably are posters pinned to the now showing board found just across the gummy shop and animated films being screened in the back alley. Son of a submariner. It wouldn't be Kingdom Hearts without getting a little Final Fantasy in the trail mix, now would it? From concept art to camera angles, the Verum Rex trailer seen during the opening cinematic to Toy Box World is one big, intricate Easter egg. It's a not-so-subtle dig at how Kingdom Hearts 3 director, Tetsuya Nomura, was taken off of Final Fantasy Versus 13 when it was shifted to Final Fantasy 15 with Hajime Tabata at the helm. And that's before you even get to the world itself. On the second floor of Galaxy Toys, there's a line of Dissidia NT action figures. Classic Final Fantasy summons Bahamut, Odin, and Ifrit are all prominently on display, along with box copies of Rama, Alexander, and Leviathan lining the shelves. One of the form changes for the Wheel of Fate Keyblade is called Highwind, and turns Sora's Keyblade into a spear. This is a reference to Kingdom Hearts regular Sid Highwind, who wielded a spear in Final Fantasy VII, before apparently retiring to run an accessory shop in the first Kingdom Hearts. As is tradition throughout the Kingdom Hearts series, the most powerful weapon Sora can wield is the Ultima Keyblade, a clear reference to the Ultima weapon found throughout the Final Fantasy series ever since VI. It also boasts the highest stats of any other Keyblade in the game, sitting pretty at both 13 Strength and 13 Magic. It's obviously a reference to Nomura's favorite number, Organization 13, 13 Dark Pieces of the Keyblade, and just over 13 years between the releases of Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. Okay, that's probably reaching a bit, but it's fun to think about. More than just a pun, the Fantastic Seven is a callback to the gelatinous blob himself, Flan, commonly found as enemies in a slew of Final Fantasy games. In Kingdom Hearts 3, there's one in each world to find and challenge. If you beat them, they provide rare synthesis materials needed for some of the best gear in the game. This next one's definitely worth mentioning for lovers of Final Fantasy foes. Hidden amongst the stars while piloting your gummy ship are constellations bearing the likeness of various baddies, from bombs and cactus 
cactars to stab happy tonberries with nothing left to lose. If you take a picture of them, you'll unlock the blueprints for that character's gummy ship. Speaking all things gummy, did you happen to catch that your gummy phone ringtone during certain cutscenes is a chip tune rendition of Sora's theme? So retro. Also, like previous Kingdom Hearts games, the default gummy ship blueprint is called High Wind as well, a reference to Sid's airship. The minion parade doesn't stop in the stars. It keeps on marching back down to the toy box world. There are a bunch of block puzzles that need moving to progress the story in the Kid Corral. Once solved, the blocks take shape as quite the prickly surprise. A giant cactar. Best of all, its completion is accompanied by Final Fantasy's iconic victory jingle. So those were some of our favorite Easter eggs in Kingdom Hearts 3. What are yours? Let us know in the comments. Need some more Kingdom Hearts in your life? Check out our simplified Kingdom Hearts timeline. I've been your host, Sydney. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.